Hi, it's Anika from Living For Later. So today I want to talk to you about the idea that in order to resist the devil, you first have to submit to God. A lot of us are, you know, into, I'm gonna rebuke that devil in the name of Jesus and I'm gonna, you know, tell him to, to just get away from me and I'm gonna try to resist him. And oftentimes we find ourselves powerless because the devil won't move and we wonder, why don't I have any authority over the enemy? As the scriptures tell me that I should as a believer, why is it that the enemy doesn't seem to respond when I rebuke him? If anything, it seems like he just moves in other demons and they just sit and, and set up shop, right? And they just won't leave at all. Well, I think a big part of it is sometimes our lack of submission to God. And it's amazing to me because in the last video I spoke about how who we worship, um, our actions demonstrate who we worship. And I think that who we worship is also the one that we submit to and whomever we submit to and if it's God we then have power over the enemy listen to this it's clearly demonstrated here in Matthew 4 uh, verses 8 through 11 we see here that the devil in this, this last temptation in Matthew 4 takes Jesus to this high point of the mountain and he's like hey if you bow down and worship me all of this will be yours and Jesus is like ah, no no thank you you know, I know clearly that I'm to worship uh, God and Him only. Then, this is what I really want to focus in on. Verse 11, Matthew uh, 4 verse 11 says, Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. So, Jesus had the power over the enemy and had the ability to resist him because Jesus worshiped God, right? And we know that worship is more than words. It's our lifestyle. And if you worship God, that means that you are submitted to God. Now, if we also tar turn to James 4, and I think it's verses 7 and 8. I can't find it here in my notes. Or verses 7 where it talks about submit to God resist the devil and then he'll flee from you. Do you notice the order there? First, you must submit to God and then after you're submitted to God, you then have the power to resist the devil and then the end result is the devil got to go. And we see this clearly demonstrated here in verse 11. The devil left Jesus and the angels came and attended him. So in this moment, Jesus had the power to resist the devil and he had a victory over the devil. Now we know that the devil came at other times. This wasn't the only time that he came, but Jesus had perpetual victory over the enemy because he was consistently submitted to the Father. So my question to you is if you feel like, you know what, I've been praying the house down praying up a storm and the devil isn't leaving. He seems to be all over my finances. He seems to be all over my marriage. He seems to be all over my children. What's the problem? My question to you is, are you truly submitted to God? If you are a wife, as the scripture tells us in Ephesians 5, 20 through 22 through 24 and Colossians 3, 18, as clear as day, Wives, submit to your husband is unto the Lord. If you in your mind like, oh, he doesn't understand, um, you know, what, what I'm supposed to be doing and I'm not lining up with what he's telling me to do and I'm just going to go listen to my family members, do what they tell me to do, listen to my girlfriends because they're a lot smarter than him and besides he's hurt me in the past and he's made, you know, silly mistakes. No, 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 no. Scriptures clearly tell us we submit to our husbands, this is for wives, as unto the Lord, as it is fitting to the Lord. Now, of course, if they're telling you craziness, that's a whole nother story. But I think that a lot of times we wonder, okay, why am I not prospering in certain areas? And I'm not talking about in terms of money, but just spiritually prospering. Why am I lacking peace? Why isn't my house in disarray? Well, are you submitted, right? And in Hebrews 13, 17, it reminds us that we're to also submit to our spiritual leaders. Now, I know that we live in a day and age where 
it seems like we shun even in the body of Christ we shun the idea of community and oh ain't no preacher gonna tell me what I need to do I got a personal relationship with God well wonderful yes you should have a personal relationship with God and yes you should seek him on your own but God built us for community right and in that community he puts a shepherd over the flock right? This is not man's idea. This is God's idea. Now, let me say to be fair, I think it's unfortunate that we do have a lot of pastors who have abused their roles um, as the spiritual head and they have um, manipulated the people of God. But you know what? This is not every single one of the pastors and i know because i'm married to one of them who walks in integrity no he's not perfect but he he seeks um to please the lord so i say that to say that we can't throw everybody in one basket and just be like oh i'm done with the church because and i'm not submitting to to, to anyone well the scripture tells us clearly in hebrews 13 17 that we're to obey our spiritual leaders, right? And to submit their authority because when they stand before God, they're going to have to give an account for our souls. So that lets me know that God expects us to have some type of spiritual leader and to be in some form of community. Again, this is not man's idea. And if you've been in a situation where you've been um, abused by a spiritual leader, ask the Lord, I'm sorry. First of all, I'm sorry because that's not how God intended it. But ask the Lord, sincerely pray and ask the Lord to heal you um, and, and to not project your previous experience onto every spiritual leader that's out there. Because again, that's not the case. God always has a faithful remnant, always. Okay, so then also, and I know this is a touchy one, Romans 13, 1 and 1 Peter 2, 13 through 14 also lets us know that we're to sum submit, right, um, to, to, to the governing authorities. And again, I know this is a difficult one, especially because we're in such difficult times and we see a lot of um, corruption in our government. But guess what? Back then, <laughs> when these words were penned, there was a lot of corruption in the government as well. So God doesn't give you an out. He still asks you to submit to the governing authority and you allow him to deal with the injustice. Of course, we submit as it is unto the Lord. If they're asking us to go jump off the bridge, we know that's a whole different story, right? Um, but I just want to really encourage us to take inventory and ask, Lord, have I truly been submitted to you? Because it's submission that to God's divine order that unlocks the power of God. There's so much power in submission and there's no way around it. So if you feel like you have just been lacking power you pray and ask the Lord to highlight to you the areas in your life where you really haven't been submitted and have the humility when he shows you to then go back and pray and ask the Lord to forgive you and to show you how to walk out submission um, in your day-to-day -day life. Submission to him and to those that he's put in authority over you. Because here's the thing, you can't say that you're submitted to God but not submitted to those whom he, he's told you to be submitted to. Like, that doesn't make any sense because really, even as, I'll take myself for an example, as a wife, when I'm submitted to God, uh, my husband, I'm really, it's, it ain't even really about my husband. It's really about God, right? Because I am obeying him. I'm submitting to my husband because God told me to submit to him. So when I'm submitting to my husband, I'm really submitting to God. Same thing on my workplace. When I'm submitting to my boss, um, no matter how difficult it, it can be, but I'm showing up and I'm working with the spirit of excellence and I'm not getting an attitude, I'm really submitting to God because this is how God has told me, this is what God has told me is his divine order. So I hope this makes sense. I encourage you as always to go back, review the scriptures that I discuss and allow the Lord to lead and guide you and respond if he has shown you areas in which you're not submitted. All right, you be blessed.